So this is John chapter 19, the scripture for the 25th of December. God has odd timing, I think. When I had outlined the New Testament reading plan back around this time last year, I had no intention of having the reading plan go through a pandemic. Uh, I, I also had no intention of reading about Jesus' crucifixion on Christmas. Yet, I think this horrible death was a key part of Christ's work on earth. Just as uh, Nicodemus brings myrrh at the end of this chapter, having confessed Christ as Lord back in John 3, the Magi brought myrrh to the Christ child right after his birth. The high king of heaven and earth was too threatening of a position for the religious leaders to spare, which is heartbreaking. So getting into the chapter, a, a pilot both receives somehow too much blame and also not enough blame for, for Jesus' death. See, on, on the one hand, he says multiple times, I find no case against this man. He has Jesus flogged, which is a brutally painful punishment in hopes that when, when, when the religious leaders see the, the mockery that he's put Jesus through with flogging, a crown of thorns, uh, a, a mockery of a purple robe, that that'll save Jesus' life. But on the other hand, he doesn't use the full extent of his power to spare Jesus when his job is at risk. He, he crumples at the blackmail of the religious leaders in verse 12, assenting to Jesus' crucifixion. You see, the religious leaders uh, were, were telling him, hey, anyone who allows for a self-professed king other than Caesar to live, well, that person's no friend of Rome. It's an implicit way of telling Pilate, hey, man, uh, we know who to go to when you're having your job review, and we know what we're going to tell them. Um, so I think that Pilate doesn't stand up to this at all. He, he, he crumples. Jesus' words to Pilate in verse 11 get at the idea of complicity. Maybe you've heard of this word before, being complicit in, 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 in a, a sinful action or in a, in a illegal action. Uh, Pilate is complicit in Jesus' death because he could have done more to stop it, but didn't. Uh, he didn't aid and abet those who were trying to put Jesus to death either, and I want to be clear about this. Um, those who were angling passionately for his death had to do it on their own, but Complicity, it's a slippery thing. Avoiding complicity in sin often comes at great personal cost. Whether you're avoiding complicity in racism, whether you're, you're avoiding complicity in, in, in you know, what you see as healthcare options that aren't in line with God's will, whether, whether you're avoiding complicity in, in global warming, uh, whatever you know, the, the issue, so frequently we feel so small, like our actions won't do anything. It often feels easier just to kind of go along with uh, uh, and, and be complicit. I mean, if Pilate had taken a stand here, right, the, the religious leaders could have had him sacked and replaced with someone who would allow for Jesus' death. And so what, what would it profit if Pilate took a stand? Avoiding complicity involves great cost for seemingly little gain. And and yet, Pilate, by avoiding complicity, could have given Mary a few more days with her son. He, he could have acted as a secular conscience against the religious leaders of this time. He, 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 these religious leaders who claim they had no king but Caesar, which is objectively false, um, if they are abiding by the tenets of their religion. He could have taken a stand. He could have trusted his gut, which wanted to release Jesus, and, and instead... He had to make do with insufficient half measures, naming the crucified Christ as the king of the Jews, nailing that on his cross and getting one last dig in at the Pharisees. But what did that accomplish? Uh, he, he, he let Joseph of Arimathea offer some kindness to the body. Uh, had Pilate, you know, that's nice, but had Pilate decided he would not be complicit in the death of an innocent man? And had Pilate's successor made that same choice? And so on and so forth. Jesus would not have died. So for us not to be complicit in the same way Pilate was, we also are called to fight a seemingly, seemingly losing battle against the sin that wishes to entrap us, I think it's important to note that even a hopeless fight can be won with Jesus. So I wonder, what sins are you complicit in, and how can you fight against them?
That's all for John chapter 19. On Monday, we'll look at John chapter 20. May God bless you in your reading of scripture.